Hello everybody and welcome to my third advanced flipping guide. Today I'm going to be showing you how I flip rare items. Uh, so it's going to be costly to start off. You'll need a lot of money to start with, uh, but the payoff can be extraordinarily high. Uh, I'm going to go over what sort of items are considered rare, um, how to find items that will be good to flip um, that are rare as well. Uh, not all of them actually are very good at, for flipping. Uh, how to find the margin of the items because it can be very costly to check it if you're not doing it right. Um, we're going to do some example flips, uh, show you some footage of uh, flips I've done in the past or some I've done pretty recently. And uh, lastly we're going to go over a list of items uh, that tend to work well. Now of course these are just for ideas, you don't want to necessarily rely just on this list uh, because it's publicly available. Uh, but it'll give you some ideas uh, on where to start when you're flipping uh, rare items. Alright, let's get started. Okay, so to start off, uh, what would be considered a rare item? And I define a rare item generally by the trade volume. Uh, so the amount that are traded per day is kind of how I define how rare an item is. Uh, so when, I can, when I'm considering something to be rare, I would say it has no greater than 500 traded a day. And that would be pushing it a little bit for me. I wouldn't go above 500 because the item then is the margin tends to be much smaller. Uh, people are trading them all the time. You don't have as much opportunity to snag a rare item for cheaper when some guy gets it, say, from a clue scroll reward or just gets an imbued heart randomly or something that someone doesn't need but someone else might. Um, you won't have as big an opportunity to snag it for low and then sell it to someone who needs it. Uh, I would try to keep the volume under 500. Under 200 would be ideal uh, to have the largest margin. Uh, but at the same time, it still has to be an item that's traded. So I'd try to keep at least 20 or 30 traded a day. Any below that, then it's risky. The item can fluctuate down when someone needs it. You could be holding on to the item for days and not even make a successful flip. Uh, so to start, we'll show you some items and how I find the trade volume. Uh, so I'm using GE Tracker. Uh, link will be in the description. It's just a website to check up on the analytics of items in the Grand Exchange. Uh, so what we're going to do is look at some items. Uh, first of all, let's look at an item I won't do, but would be kind of considered rare. So like the Abyssal Whip. Let's open that up. Uh, so the Abyssal Whip, it's an expensive item. It's a rare item to get. Like, it's not a very common drop, but it's a very commonly used item. Um, the trade volume per day is up 3,000, 4,000. Uh, you're not ever going to get a very good margin on this, although <laughs> the item has been raising up. But we're trying to ignore trends here and just focus on what we can get um, per day. And you can see here the the price doesn't really fluctuate a whole lot. It's just trending upwards, but that's going to take way too long. Um, now let's look at an item, uh, say from a clue scroll reward. Uh, so one I've been doing recently is the uh, Dragon Scimitar Ornament Kit. Uh, now this trade volume is much lower. I believe it's 30 or 40. Well, it's a little bit higher than that. So there's uh, 50 to 60 traded a day, uh, which is pretty nice for what we're looking for here. Um, and we're going to go down to the day graph. Okay, so it doesn't look like a big difference here, uh, but when we're talking, this is like a 10-20% increase. That adds up to a lot of money. Uh, so we can see here, someone sold it for 45.10. Um, uh, sorry, someone bought it for 45.10. And uh, later, someone sold it for 46.60. That is a... Oh, is that me? No, wait, I'm over here. <laughs> um, but you can see that is a 150, 200k margin on an item like this. And uh, I mean, look, tons traded. Enough traded, I wouldn't say tons. But even if you flipped five or six of these, that could lead to a mil or a mil and a half in profit. Okay, so this is a little bit of an extreme example, but the third age pickaxe. So you would imagine this item would have a huge margin on it here, and look, 125 mil. So I mean, that sounds great. Of course, it's an insanely expensive item. Um, but if you look at the day by day for how much is traded, there is like one traded a week. Uh, this is an extreme example. Even for items that only have three or four traded a day, uh, the item pricing fluctuates so much, and you would think that's a good thing, but uh, really, it just leads to a highly volatile item. You could lose out big on this item because someone might not necessarily buy it for that price or sell it for that price. It could go either way. You're just as likely to make 100 mil as you are to lose 100 mil, uh, unless you're going to be extremely patient. But this is a little too extreme, uh, even for me. <laughs> um, but those are three examples of the items. The second example is what you're looking for. An item that has a medium amount of quantity uh, traded per day. Hope, 
in the range of 30 to 200. Okay, so now I'm going to go over how I check for an item's margin. Uh, because rare items do have large margins, uh, you can stand to lose quite a bit by checking them. Uh, but here are the two ways you do it. So you either do it normally, you buy one and sell one instantly, uh, which works for certain rare items, and but I wouldn't recommend doing it for all of them. Or you do use a GE Tracker or another Grand Exchange tracking tool uh, to have a look at the price. When I would normally check an item is maybe when the buying quantity is around 200, 300 upwards. Because uh, at that point, the trade volume is enough that the uh, delay on the tracking tools uh, make it so the information is usually invalid or not very accurate. In the ballpark maybe, but not exact by any means. Um, so let's have a look at an item quickly. Uh, so I brought the Armadale page 3. Uh, now on GE Tracker it says we have 135k margin. Um, but since the uh, the buying limit is 100, 200, I wouldn't say that item or that price is very accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and check it right now. So it's saying that the um, we'll go down and check exactly what it's uh, referring. Oh, that's actually a little higher. But um, anyway, it's saying the last sell price was 504, the last buy price was 509. Ooh, that really sucks. But uh, anyway, we bought it for one mil, and uh, we're going to sell it for. 509k. So that is a crazy large margin on the book um, page. Unfortunately, probably not going to get that. Uh, so that being said, this was very inaccurate. You can see that there. Would I flip this item right now? Probably not. The reason why? Uh, the price I bought it at 509 uh, is quite a bit higher than the item is regularly at all the time. So you could very easily lose money unless I made a quick flip on this. I would say it's a no-go. Um, now for an item like uh, the Dragon Scimitar Ornament Kit, uh, which we looked at earlier, the trade limit on this item, or not the trade limit, the trade quantity is only about 30 or 40. Um, and we can go down to the day graph. And since there's only a couple traded every hour, we can get a pretty accurate um, view on how expensive the item is. So if we have a look here, this is me. I no, not that. Where is it? I well, anyway, I put my offer in for four uh, four sixty, and somewhere in here. But anyway, I realized um, someone had undercut me right here. So four four sixty and one, and then I moved my buy price up by a little bit to four four six two, and those are my prices. Though I they're very accurate because the volume is very low. So it gives it time for the uh, website to update the information. So for items that have a trade limit of under 50 or maybe even 100, depending on the item, I would recommend uh, just looking at the information and then popping in a relevant buy offer. Okay guys, so now I'm going to show you an example flip. Now this is going to be one where I just check the margin regularly. I flip the item like any other item, it's just a rare item. Uh, a lot more money to do so, but it can easily be worth the uh, investment to check the margin. Uh, so now we're going to start off with the Bandos God Sword. I wouldn't even consider this a rare item, but I'm going to show you the distinction between this and the Magic Fang, which I'm going to do a minute in a minute. Uh, so this item only has a 30k margin, and the reason mainly behind this is there's thousand, a thousand of these traded a day, and uh, it's not really a rare item. It's just an expensive item that is traded actually quite a reasonable amount. So we're only going to get a 30k margin here. That being said, it's still a pretty good item to flip. We can, uh, we're going to do five of these. And uh, we can get that done probably an hour. Uh, but you can really tell the difference between an item like this and the Magic Fang, uh, which only has 200 or 300 traded a day. Um, the margin really does get reflected in that amount. All right, so now on to the Magic Fang. Uh, we'll see if we can buy it instantly. No, we can't. So again, this item trades 200 to 300 a day. Uh, drop from Zalra if you didn't know. Uh, we'll instantly buy it for 25.88, and uh, we'll sell it for 24.75. So this has a 100k margin on it, uh, which is three times the amount of the Bandos God Sword, even though it's a cheaper item. And this will still flip reasonably quickly, uh, but the difference in the quantity really makes a difference in the margin. Um, the Bandos Godsword would be good if you were going to be here the whole time. But the Magic Fang is the perfect item if you're going to go away for a couple hours or leave it in overnight. Alright guys, so we'll leave these items for a little bit and we'll come back when they both have sold. Okay, so we are back 
and uh, we've sold both the items. Uh, now the Bandos God Sword, uh, because it changes prices a lot, uh, we sold it back exactly what we bought it for, so it really didn't work too well. Uh, the Magic Fang, however, uh, we can, uh, got the 109k margin that we wanted. Uh, we sold five of them, so we got 545k in profit uh, from this item, which is really good. Um, that being said, we do have to take uh, 109k off for checking the margin. Still 436k. Uh, from investing 10 mil only. So with a 4% return, uh, really not too bad. So now I'm going to go over an example flip where I have just checked the margin on uh, GE Tracker or another Grand Exchange uh, tracking website. So to start off, I found an item here, which I think might be good, and this is the Dragon Defender Ornament Kit. Uh, the trade limit, or the quantity, sorry, is uh, between 25 and 50, so I think I could get an accurate uh, price for the buy and sell offers. So now um, we have this under the month, by the way, to check. So this will bring it, break it down to per day, uh, which is just kind of easy to visualize um, how many per day is traded. Now, once we've established that there's a, a reasonable quantity uh, per day, we're going to come up here to the price. And uh, now this is interesting. We can go down all the way to the day. And this is what I really like about uh, this graph here is you can see the difference between the buy and sell prices right in the graph form uh, so we can see the last uh, recorded buy price was 33.40 and the last recorded sell price is 38.40 so that is a 300k profit uh, which could be quite nice and they trade uh, quite a bit every hour uh, so we're gonna go ahead and do this item we'll plop an offering for a roughly 33.40 and um, this is the dragon Defender ornament kit. 3341k. And just to bite this now, I know I'm undercutting, and honestly, a lot of the times when I do this, I probably shouldn't. But for items like this, where there's only 10 or 20 traded a day, there is not room for multiple people doing this item. So undercutting is not okay, but it kind of just has to be done. <laughs> Uh, because if you put it in for the same price, you'll be both be waiting hours <laughs> and hours, maybe even days to buy your items. Um, it's kind of just up to you to find an item that nobody else has done. But I might be wrong. I'm totally up for discussion regarding this. But anyway, 3341 is what we're going to put it in for. And uh, well, we'll just do two. Unfortunately, we can't quite afford three. 3341. And uh, we'll come back when the item has sold. Okay, so we only managed to get one. Uh, we waited uh, only about an hour and a half or something, and we bought the one. And uh, then we kind of got impatient and decided to just sell it. Uh, but that being said, we sold it for thirty-eight forty, which was right on the nose the last uh, recorded sell price. Uh, so we'll claim that. And uh, right there, let's have a look here. That is. 500k in profit we made just off this item really didn't take very long just requires a little bit of uh, pre-planning and looking at some information so now I'm gonna quickly go over what probably a lot of you guys are waiting for and what items uh, work well and what are some example items uh, so now I've broken it down to three main categories that have a lot of rare items in them in the first in main category are, is gonna be clue scroll rewards this makes up a large majority of the items that I flip uh, some good options here are ornament kits, gilded items, pages, but honestly if you just open up uh, the master clue reward, the hard clue rewards, and just look at the items, there's a huge list of them there for you to <laughs> observe and look at. A lot of those work pretty well. Again, just look at uh, the items quantity and everything else that I showed you this video, and uh, a lot of good items there. Boss drops work pretty well, uh, items like the eternal crystal, the gauging crystal, uh, if you have a lot of money, you can do uh, hilt drops uh, from God Wars, um, abyssal bludgeons, stuff. I wouldn't do the abyssal whip so much, uh, but uh, abyssal bludgeon, the abyssal dagger. Also, the slayer drops tend to have some rare items, not as much. Items like uh, the dragon chain body or like the imbued heart are pretty rare. Uh, the reason why there aren't as many items in the slayer category is people do slayer a lot, um, tons. Um, of the rare items, a lot of them end up in the game, like the Abyssal Whip, Dark Bow. A lot of them end up in the game because people are grinding out the Slayer. They get a lot of kills, a lot more items end up in the game. Uh, so those are three categories. 
a lot of good items in there and that's where I would start when I'm looking for items uh, that are rare to flip. Alright guys, that about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed my uh, advanced flipping guide number 3 for rare items. Um, I'd love to hear what items you guys have had success doing. Of course, you don't have to post it if you're currently flipping it. Um, but if you have some uh, items that you've done, I would love if you left a comment down below uh, for some items and just to get motivation for people who have never really tried flipping rare items before because there's a lot of money to be had and a lot of items to do. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.